Alrighty, so we're going to learn a little bit about writing for the violin. Here on the left I have the program MuseScore, which we'll be using. MuseScore is a free program, which you can get off of MuseScore.com or MuseScore.org. You can download the program and install it. It's not a very large one. The reason I like it is because it's a free program that has the functionality of a program which costs many hundreds of dollars. So for our activity today we're going to take the song Sweden from the popular game Minecraft and we're going to learn how we can turn the melody of Sweden into that of a violin melody. Essentially what we want to do with most songs that we encounter is we want to take the very first note, the very top note, or I should say the highest note that we encounter throughout the piece, and we just want to simply transfer that over. And I'll show you what I mean. So first of all in MuseScore we're going to make a new score by clicking the new score button, or you can hit Control N. When I click that, a bunch of options come up, and I can fill those options out if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Title, Sweden. Uh, composer is... Uh, I forgot the name of the guy. Anyway, we'll just say Sweden. Next. And then it says create a template or select a template. We're just going to click this blank one because we want to select our own instruments. On the left, there's a bunch of categories, but we'll be choosing strings. And then we'll select the violin. When the violin's highlighted, we'll click the add button. So now violin will appear in our score. For a later activity, we'll also need the cello. So let's go ahead and add that now. Another name for the cello is the violin cello, as it appears in Italian. So we'll click violin cello and click add. Now that we have the violin and the violin cello, we're ready to begin. We'll hit next. Now we have to choose the key signature. The key signature tells us about the notes that we're going to be finding in the song. Sometimes notes can be normal, or they can be sharp, which means they're slightly raised a little bit, they're a slightly higher pitch, or they can be flat, which means a, a slightly lower pitch. So this one right here, this would be a sharp, it's the same symbol as pound or hashtag, whatever you like to call it, and then this one down here would be a flat. When I look over at Sweden, I can see that it has two sharps. So I'm going to go ahead and select the key signature that has two sharps so that it matches. And then I'll hit next. It asks us some other information, but don't worry about that. Just go ahead and hit finish. Now we're left with a blank screen and a bunch of empty measures. Those little black bars you see in the measures or just a rest. It just tells you that there's no notes there yet. But we're going to be putting some notes in. So in MuseScore there's several ways to enter notes, but the most basic of them all is just to go ahead and click the notes in yourself. If we look at the first measure of Sweden, we're seeing a lot of things happening. So there's couple notes stacked on top of each other, then there's a single note, a couple notes stacked on top of each other, and a single note. And you'll also notice these lines, which sort of look like maybe almost smiles, right? We're going to ignore those lines for now. And we're going to go ahead and start entering in the notes exactly as we see. For the first beat, since there's two notes, we'll go ahead and just only enter the very top note, the very highest note. Even if you don't know the name of that musical note, that's okay. All you have to do is just copy the way it looks. And later in time, you'll hopefully learn the musical notes. 
To start entering notes in your score, finally we're going to hit N. You can press N on the keyboard, I believe, or just click this N button right here. Once that happens, if I hover my mouse over the score, you'll start to see a note that moves up and down if I move my mouse up and down. And wherever I click, a note will pop in. I just clicked this note, but it's not the note that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and hit backspace, get rid of it. You could have also hit delete. So I can see that the note being used is a quarter note because it's black. It's a black circle and it has a stem. So if I look at the top of the different kind of notes, I know that I have the right note selected because it is a quarter note. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that note in that I'm seeing. It looks like there's two tiny lines below the main staff, and then my highest note is right there. I'm going to click that in. So see how it, it appears? Then for the next beat, it's actually going to be that very same note. And for the third beat in the measure, it'll be this note, which is a D. And the fourth beat will also be that note. So now we've successfully entered in the notes of the very first measure. I'm going to go ahead and enter in the notes of the next three measures, just so we can take a look. Again, all you really have to do is just compare the position of the notes on the sheet music with where you're clicking. It's a simple matter of copying down notes for now. Great. So we have the first four measures entered in, and already I can see something very interesting. If I take a look here at these first, this first measure, I notice that the distance from this low G to this next D is going to be a fifth. When I say a distance of a fifth, I mean how far apart are those notes musically in terms of highness and lowness. A fifth is fairly far apart, not very, but fairly. And then next we have an interval or a far apartness of a third. The interesting thing that the composer does is when you look at measures three and four, he repeats the pattern that are used in measures one and two. So again, you have that kind of larger distance of a fifth. You have a bit of a smaller distance called a third. And then in the next two measures, you have that larger distance of a fifth and that smaller distance of a third. All the meanwhile, the notes are slowly ascending from measure to measure. See, as the first measure starts on a G, the next measure starts on an A, the next measure starts on a B, and the next measure starts on a C. So we're ascending, our notes are getting higher as we go. I think this makes a great compositional technique because if he were to stay on the same notes, it would get very boring. But using the same rhythm while changing the notes can help to keep things relatable and exciting. So in terms of finishing off the piece, we would go ahead and continue to copy the highest notes that we see. I'm going to go ahead and do only just the next line, just the next four measures that are right here. So again, I'll need to click my N to make sure I'm in note entry mode, and I'll start copying down the notes. And remember, I'm only selecting the highest pitch in each measure. Great. Now here we have an interesting situation. 
we finally have a situation where we're using a note that's not a quarter note. This note here is actually a grouping of two eighth notes. So I'll have to select the eighth note from up here, up top. When I select an eighth note, all I'm doing is just like before, I just click in where the eighth notes are. When I put two eighth notes next to each other, they'll automatically be connected. See that? They're automatically connected by a top bar. Finally, I'll have to go back and I'll have to select quarter note because the next note does not have a stem. It's just a circle with, or I'm sorry, it does have a stem but not a flag. A flag would, hit, would come off of the stem. So it has that circle on the stem. But it does have one thing extra. It has some dots. Okay, and the dots just make that note a little bit longer. So make sure before you place your note, you're going to click the dot right here. And it's going to add a little bit of extra length onto the note, which we'll need. And I can see that the note is the first space, which is an F. I'm going to click that, and we get an F with a dot there. That's exactly what we want. Finally, I'll notice that I have these two notes, which have two um, connector lines at the top. So those connector lines are actually called beams. So you can think of them as construction beams. And so to match that, we'll need to get the note called a 16th note right here, which is a note that has two uh, flags. And we'll go ahead and use this, and we'll just click those remaining notes in. That would be a D. Oh, my measure jumped down there. Sometimes that will happen. It will change position. Okay, a D and an E. Oh, and it jumped back. So no problem. So we can now just check our work and make sure that it's looking good. I'm not sure if this will make any noise, depending on my settings. You know what, it probably won't, so I'm not going to play it back. But anyway, this is what it looks like, and as long as you've copied the notes on the document, it's going to sound just fine. It's going to sound the way that it should sound. So before you go on, uh, practice, um, practice writing in, practice using the program, and go ahead and finish up copying down the highest notes that you find in Sweden. And 